All right, what's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul. I thought maybe we would do a little tutorial today. I have this copy of Journey into Mystery, Annual Number One from 1965, and um, this is an extra copy that I have. <clears throat> Obviously, spoiler alert for Thor: Love and Thunder. This fella shows up in the end credits. This is his first appearance. It's also the first appearance of Zeus, by the way, who obviously features somewhat prominently in Thor Love and Thunder. Um, I have this book. I have the American version, which this is. I have a Canadian version, and I also have the Pence British version. All three of the variants, if you will. Again, this is um, an extra copy for me. This is the second, or this is my lower grade of my two American copies. Um, I guess I should say United States because Canada is part of America. Um, and it needs a clean and a press. And I'm not sure what else. So I thought today we would just start off by talking about um, how we assess a book like this. So the first thing I do is get an initial sort of impression of the grade, okay? And then I start looking for uh, pressable defects and flaws. So this book has some chipping here along the top, has pretty light crease, but a color breaking crease here, some edge folds and either corner loss or fold, looks like loss, so that piece of paper is just gone. Here's a fold. The spine is pretty square from here to here, but starts to slide out. And the paper is loose right here. In terms of overall soiling, light soiling, but soiling that we can clean up all in these whites, it's pretty obvious. This will clean up um, quite a bit. We can certainly brighten this book. Generally, the spine's pretty good, except right down here, where we basically have a cover split. And that's why that the spine is actually square. But because of the cover split, it looks like this paper's coming up. We can actually lay this paper back down, and we can use... We wanted to we could use methyl cellulose or another glue that would be essentially undetectable by CGC um, we'll see what we want to do about that in terms of the back cover um, we have some pieces missing that same chipping here and general soiling in terms of the interior by the way I I didn't mention it right at the top but my hands are clean and dry. Um, Non-modern books like this, I I can safely handle with clean, dry books. I feel like, or with clean, dry hands, I feel like it's slightly safer actually with clean, dry hands than it is with gloves, because you just lose a little bit of your feedback with gloves, and um, they can catch on paper, and so. There's a time and place for gloves, but I don't tend to feel it's here. We can see that there's yellowing discoloration on this interior cover, but the interior is actually quite nice. A little bit of tanning up here, but generally these staples are in good shape. We don't have, I guess we have one tiny spot of rust migration from that staple, but none from that. Generally, that's pretty good for these books. Keep in mind this 1965, uh, right? Similarly here, um, this is actually looks whiter than the front cover interior, but staples are in pretty good shape. Interior is in pretty good shape. I guess there's a tiny tear there. It almost looks like that's actually looks like a bindery tear because I see it on multiple pages. Oh, maybe not. At any rate, <clears throat> so what can we do to uh, improve this book? Well, 
Um, it definitely could use a cleaning, especially here. The back is, is quite soiled. Um, the front, it's not quite as obvious, but there's definitely some areas here that can be lightened up with a good cleaning. So I think this could use a cleaning in terms of a press. It could also benefit from a press. And um, the interiors potentially could be lightened up a little bit. And this part of the spine could be, um, we actually probably could just reactivate the glue that's already there. And that should not trigger anything vis-a-vis -vis restoration with CGC. So those are things that we can do to this book. Um, I'm going to come up with a game plan and start working on it. I will most likely shoot time-lapse videos because um, I think this sort of these sort of techniques are fairly widely available on YouTube already. I don't think my channel is really contributing that much. Um, I already did a video on the resources. You know, there are multiple books published on this, on this process. So um, other than little things maybe that I do that others don't or aren't widely talked about, um, I don't think I have a lot to contribute on that front. One thing I will say, too, before I get started is that when you see this kind of chipping, it often means that this paper's brittle. Even though this isn't deeply yellowed, um, we want to be extremely careful when we clean up here. We want to be very gentle. Um, so, as I said, this is just a little intro video. Uh, I'll come up with a game plan. I may do a short video series just of a uh, time lapse of me cleaning this. Um, <clears throat> or I may just do a before and after when I'm done. Uh, so that's all I wanted to chat about for today. I will probably, I do want to get this cleaned up quickly because uh, this book is in demand at the moment and it is a double for me. I think I may as well moving on to another collector while there is a lot of excitement around this book. So um, I will be working on it uh, this week and you'll see a conclusion one way or the other, I think, from me uh, relatively soon on this book. So hope you enjoyed that short little walk through this book and enjoy the hunt and please take care of one another.